The moment you and I and the entire world was convinced, world else Stephen Curry was on his way to changing the NBA forever. And trust me when I say this, I don't think anyone has had a welcoming moment quite like Steph. So let's revisit the time Steph Curry actually became one of the most intimidating players of all time. Let's rewind all the way back to 2008, shall we? It was one of the biggest college basketball duels of all time when two of the top prospects of the upcoming 2009 NBA Draft faced off against each other. It was Stephen Curry vs Oklahoma star big man Blake Griffin. What made this game even more special was some of the people who were actually in attendance that day. LeBron, Kevin Durant, and Russell Westbrook. LeBron was arguably the best player in the world and Westbrook and Durant were the next great young duo of the NBA looking to establish the next powerhouse team in the league. And they all came to watch the 6 foot 3 inch baby face looking point guard go up against what many believed as the consensus next best NBA prospect in the 6'10", Blake Griffin. Oklahoma won a thrilling game led by Blake Griffin's 25 point and even this attempted slam dunk as time expired in regulation for some extra spice, I guess. But even in a loss, Steph showed up and showed out with 44 points and an epic shooting display that literally had everyone's jaw dropped. And I gotta say, KD, LeBron, and Russ were all hype. And Steph that day looked like the best prospect for the upcoming NBA draft. But sure, everyone knew he was good, but was he special? Would he, I don't know, become one of the greatest players of all time? No one could begin to imagine what Steph Curry would go on to do in his NBA career. In fact, scouts label Steph as someone who lacks proper shot selection, and get this, his first step is average at best, and considering his skinny frame and poor explosiveness around the basket in traffic, it's unlikely that he'll be able to get to the free throw line anywhere near as much in the NBA as he does in college. Uh, yeah. Some foolish scout really said this about the guy who carved a career not just from getting to and making over 90% of his free throws, but also becoming one of the greatest below the basket finishers of all time, especially at his size. But despite the performance that really put Steph under the national spotlight, he was still far from becoming the absolute terror of an offensive player that he is today. Even if KD, LeBron, and Russ approved of Steph and were blown away by what they saw, the babyface assassin was still on the come up. Watching Steph Curry evolve into an all-star was not always the most encouraging thing for Warriors fans. After his few couple of years in the league were notably plagued by several knee injuries, came perhaps the biggest season why Steph became well, Steph. Oh, and just thank the Milwaukee Bucks for rejecting a trade that would send them Steph Curry in favor of a trade that got them Monte Ellis instead. And no offense to Monte Ellis, he was a star and all, but <laughs> he's no Steph. The Warriors sent Ellis to the Bucks in March during the 2011-12 season, and come to 2012-13 season was Steph's first opportunity of being the sole ball handler of a rapidly improving young team that added another sharpshooter in Klay Thompson a year earlier. Steph may have convinced the world that he is indeed dangerous, but he wasn't even an all-star yet, but that's what makes this moment all the more special. And what better way to introduce your superstar potential than in the mecca of basketball in a nationally televised game? Ladies and gentlemen, on February 27, 2013, just a year after the Ellis trade and exactly three years before his shot to win the game from near half court against the OKC Thunder. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! Steph walked into Madison Square Garden and lit the Knicks up for 54 points. And it was on that day basketball changed forever. Look. The Nets have been bad for so long now that people forget that Steph did this against a Knicks team that was having their best season in years. Steph did this against a team that finished the year with the 7th best record in the NBA and a team that finished 2nd in the East. Steph put on a performance that absolutely stunned every basketball fan in the world. Remember, this was 2013. Far, far from the league we watch now. Teams weren't shooting 15 threes a game back then like they are now. 2013 was still that time that any player would get benched if they attempted even half the shot Steph took during this game against the Knicks. To frame this better, the Miami Heat were neck and neck with the Warriors for the best three-point shooting team in the league from a percentage standpoint during the 2012-13 season, and they attempted only eight threes per game. During this performance for the record books, Steph drilled an impossible 11 three-pointers on 13 attempts and shot 18 for 20 overall from the floor. The ultra-efficient Steph was ripping all net on nearly every shot from distance and at least at the time, put together the greatest shooting performance in a single game in the history of basketball. In the history of basketball! And then Steph famously ran up the court, shimmying into the other end of the court, ignoring any high fives any tried to give him. And he did this all playing a game high 48 minutes. The 2 on 1 back the other way. Curry, why not? For three! Bingo! He is in a zone. This was two years before Steph's first MVP. 
two years before his first title and years before his trademark night night celebration and remember this is still before the entire league would catch on to the new age three-point shooting party and letting threes fly from places on the court they previously thought they wouldn't ever try in an actual nba game what's crazier about this all is that this steph curry performance came roughly 10 days after the nba all-star game and if you think back to the 2013 nba all-star game you'll probably remember that steph curry wasn't even selected as an all-star that year steph who was only in his fourth nba season still hadn't quite arrived as the steph who's a four-time champ and a former unanimous mvp he is today so that game got everyone buzzing dirk nowitzki said just saw steph's highlights damn clinic like a video game sick kyrie irving said sheesh steph curry went to work he even had his teammates in awe from what they just witnessed this man do and to give you an idea of just how revolutionary steph's performance really was wait until you hear this in 2012, Steph wasn't even in the top 10 in the best-selling jerseys for the 2011-12 season. In fact, guys like Rajon Rondo, Darren Williams, and even ISO Joe Johnson all did far better than Steph in merchandise sales. In 2013, again, these same three guys, including an aging Kevin Garnett, all had better-selling jerseys than the man who was getting ready to transform not just NBA basketball, but the game of basketball at every level. But after Steph announced himself to the world against the Knicks late in the 2012-13 season, he finished in top 5 of total jersey sales for the 13-14 season. So in a span of just one season, number 30 from the Warriors went from not even top 15 in jersey sales to top 5, joining the likes of LeBron, D-Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Kobe Bryant. Kids were beginning to find out a little more about the 6'3 inch sniper out of Davidson and Steph's rise to becoming the face of the NBA officially began. All for a guy who didn't even make the All-Star game, and I know that today's game is a lot different than it was in 2013, but I can think of at least a handful of players who've gotten an All-Star nod over the past few seasons who were never even as remotely impactful as Steph was early in his career. Ahead of the 2013-14 season, all of a sudden, Steph was one of the top 10 favorites to win League MVP. Yeah, League MVP. When has this ever happened? Like, when has a non-All-Star gone into the following season as one of the betting favorites to win League MVP? Not only did Steph make the All-Star game in 2014, he blew away the fan voting with more votes than Kobe Bryant, Kobe, and finished second in the entire fan voting to, of course, only LeBron. Only he and LeBron received more than 1 million votes. Not even KD, who would go on to win MVP, earned as many votes as Steph. Not even D-Wade. Not Melo. This is before not even getting more votes than LaMarcus Aldridge a season earlier. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, this may go down as one of the quickest, most transformational rises to stardom for any player in NBA history. And thus the birth of the greatest shooter to ever play in the NBA. A lot of today's fans were either young enough that they didn't fully comprehend what exactly went down that day with Steph in 2013, or simply were just too young. But ladies and gentlemen, I think we can correctly say, basketball forever changed that February day in 2013. And it was all thanks to a guy who apparently had bad shot selection and below average first step at one point. Like, come on, I, I don't even think bad shot selection even exists anymore. And you can thank that once 170 pound guy who came out of Davidson.